Escape. The Mystery of El Dorado is a game by G.V. Diochi Games, and it plays one to six players. It takes roughly about an hour or less if you're experienced, and it's for ages 13 and up. And in this game, it's basically kind of an escape room in a small box. Yes, it's a small box escape room game that basically comes with a deck of cards. And this deck of cards is going to be repeatable, however, not necessarily replayable. You'll take this deck here, and you will start by going at the number one card, you'll go to the number two card, and so on and so forth. And each card has a front and a back. And the objective, to get through the entire deck within an hour or less without taking too much damage. And there's multiple ways of going through. In this specific one, because there's many different versions of Deckscape games, you are basically an adventurer who has crash landed onto an island and is in search of the mysterious temple of El Dorado, the city of gold of El Dorado. And you're going to come across tribes people in different types of dangerous uh, animals, as well as, of course, unique mysteries and puzzles to solve along the way. And you and up to six players are going to attempt to try and solve these mysteries together. And every time you make a mistake, you'll be doing certain things in the game. And of course, if you're able to successfully get through the deck within an hour without taking too much damage, you'll win. And of course, the quicker you do it with the least amount of damage, the better. Acquire the items you need, get to the city of El Dorado, and successfully solve its mysteries. And of course, take away a little bit of gold in exchange. And that's the idea of the game. I'll show you down below how it's played, what you get in the game, and then of course I'll come up and I'll give you my review for this unique and interesting escape room game fit in a small box with just a simple deck of cards. Well, to start with, this is the game here. And yes, it comes with a box and a set of cards. And for those of you who don't like my playthroughs but like my reviews, you'll like this video because this will be very short. In the game, you will take out the deck of cards. It's already organized. And if it's not, you're going to start by organizing it from the number one to two to three, all the way to the end number, which will be 60 for this specific game. The rules are included in the game on the cards. And you'll literally just read these guys out, flip the cards over, and continue reading. And every card tells you where to go and how to go. And that's the idea of it. It's, it's very, very straightforward. You'll read the story of the game, how the mystery of El Dorado begins. You'll then be able to choose certain items, whether it be a manual or binoculars, a sharp machete, or some food, and you'll get to choose two of these guys here and set aside the other ones, which maybe you'll get throughout the game if you're lucky. And then you'll proceed through the story. Eventually, you're going to come across certain puzzles. There's also things that'll talk about, like how you score the game and how you take damage. Basically, here you found some guy here here. And if you're able to figure out how to help him, he's going to join your party and he'll give you clues throughout the entire game. Now you've come to a hilltop and you'll need to solve the best way to get through the hills. Uh, if you are able to solve it, there'll be a sol If you're not able to solve it, there's going to be a solution on the back. And if you do, you'll get to see what happens and you'll gain certain things throughout the game. You'll go through a cave and explore certain breathtaking views. You'll come across tall grass. And at certain points throughout the game, you're actually going to be able to choose different locations. So you might be able to go through something like the blue deck here and you'll separate these from the light blue deck and you'll be able to go through and choose which deck you want to go through so in this case here if I pull these guys out uh, just like that you can choose either deck to go through and that will give you new clues and be able to solve new riddles, eventually hoping to get to the island of El Dorado. And at the end of the game, based on the number of minutes it took you to get there, you'll then add any additional minutes based on how much damage you took, check to see your score, and then you're finished with the game. You'll go ahead and put it back together from 1 to 60 and you can give it to a friend or family member or if you want, play it at a later date when you don't remember it, like me because my memory is terrible, and uh, try and 100% it if you manage to fail at getting the best, the most perfect score. All right, that's it. Let's review it. So for most of you watching this, you've probably heard of an escape room and escape rooms are in, in a nutshell. You go to a location, there's a building of sorts, there's rooms, you solve puzzles and you move from room to room and you try to complete objectives to get to the ending. And it has a kind of a story, whether it's a mysterious mansion where the paintings have gone missing and you need to find them before the thief gets away, or perhaps you're stuck in this location and for some reason you need to get out. That's the typical type of escape room game. Maybe there's a bomb in the building and you have to figure out a way to disarm it because you're not able to escape within a certain time period. 
Uh, other games like the Exit Games um, from Thames and Cosmos have a kind of a similar style to this one here in which you're going to get a certain number of cards and other unique e items that you'll be utilizing in order to uh, uh, basically facilitate puzzles and solve them. Those, those games typically do not run more than one play session because you'll be cutting things up and you'll be putting things into certain places, making even little customizable models of sorts with those games. And when you're done, you throw them in the trash and it's over. Uh, this game is not necessarily like that one per se because you can play this game you can play it more than once if you'd like um, and of course you can also pass it to another group of friends after you're done playing it has a certain number of cards in it they have front and backs and numbers associated with them and uh, this one here specifically has 60 cards and each of the cards has a number on it and as you go through you're going to be solving the puzzles and of course when you're done you can put them all back in order and pass it to a friend who enjoys escape rooms or, or a group of people who enjoy an escape room and you can kind of trade back and forth these games as you gather and there's quite a few of them. Uh, this is the first one I have played, and I can easily say this is an exceptional fun escape room game. Uh, it's going to hold the main types of puzzles you'd expect in an escape room game, whether it be like some type of um, uh, find out what the numbers correspond to the symbols to get a code. Uh, you'll be making choices in this game as well. You can also go to different locations. When I say that, I mean, that, of course, when I was explaining before, you'll be able to, uh, those different cards with different backgrounds, and then maybe you want to go to the green area or the red area or perhaps the blue area here, and uh, you can kind of choose how you, where you, where you want to go, because if you choose to keep progressing faster you might get through it quicker but you might take damage uh, if you don't have certain items at the end of the game you might acquire them later or if you don't you might take damage uh, some of the puzzles require you to do foldable things like for instance this one here has a specific like foldable map here i don't want to give away too much to the story of this game but what i can say is that you do feel like you're going throughout the story of the game you'll be able to make choices based on those choices your memory is going to play a big role do i remember the symbol on a previous card and if i do this can help me solve this current puzzle Sometimes the puzzles are actually going to be more... Mm based on the knowledge you have of survival, surviving in the wild. Like, what do you want to bring? Uh, do you want to bring a pair of socks? I mean, most people don't think that's important. I mean, a pair of socks is very important whenever you're traveling out in the jungle. Haven't you ever seen uh, Naked and Afraid or Survival? Or Survivor? Uh, but, yeah, so you'll be making kind of choices based on what's the most logical thing to do. And other times it'll be based on memory. Sometimes it'll be based on puzzles. And you'll go throughout the entire game like that. And it works really well. Uh, obviously, with games that are escape room games, I don't usually recommend more than three players. And this game would not be an exception to that rule. I think two, three players works really well for this game. When you start adding more players to it, it gets too convoluted. There's too many things that people are trying to do, um, and there's not enough cards to go around. You have to like pass the card around. It could be actually cool to do something like this on like a Zoom call or some type of like online interface. I think this would be a cool live stream game because people can kind of watch you and make up their own minds as they solve the puzzles. Uh, but with the six players around a small table with a, a small deck of cards here, where you're only going to be using so many of them you know probably best at three players it plays well though and it's quick and sometimes the puzzles if you don't understand them there's ways to solve them and there's clues and you can kind of push ahead and and fail and when you fail you'll take damage and i like the way the damage works in this game uh the fact that you can take small amounts of damage which then to convert into a large amount that's harder to get rid of but you can get rid of damage in the game like all you'll need is a pen and a piece of paper um or even your phone if you want to play this game and the fact that it's extremely portable and easy to play uh it's it, it's got a really nice like uh, a barrier of entry it's really Really low you can jump in and the puzzles range from challenging to a uh, pretty common sense simple uh, style puzzles so that everybody can kind of participate regardless the amount of knowledge or information they have on puzzles and maybe they're better at common sense that's that's another thing that i noticed it's a little bit different with this game than other escape room titles and when you're done with the game you get to follow the full experience of the story it's really nice especially with this one if you can you get to the island and what's the island about what's going on it has that full kind of movie experience so when you want to pick up this game if it's under the price of a movie it's definitely going to be worth that because you do get the experience of, of a movie in a game and of course you get to experience it with your family and friends all in a single hour of play i mean and you can obviously keep playing if you go past the hour but regardless i really enjoyed deckscape it's one of those games where yeah i won't play it again the same copy but it's one i would definitely play another version of the game i would pass this on to somebody else to enjoy and you get the full experience you get everything you want from a single playthrough i think however you can play again if you want if you want to try and 100 percent it so for those of you that are completionists out there deckscape 
can be a thing that you can replay. Regardless though, if you're interested in any of the Deckscape games, go ahead and check out the link down below in the description where you can pick up these wonderful little escape room games. They're also great for uh, parties. They're great for gifts, stocking stuffers and all that. And they have a reasonable price added to them. I strongly encourage you guys to check this out. I really personally had a good time playing this game. I think you will as well. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Deckscape, The Mystery of El Dorado. If you're interested in this game, there's a link down below in the description where you can pick up this game along with their other Deckscape titles. Let me know in the comments what you think about this game. Have you played before? Are you now more interested in it because of this review? Less interested? Why or why not? Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and of course the bell notification button so you can see more videos of us uh, reviewing games just like this one. You can also go ahead and check our live streams every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST on Facebook, Insta, uh, Facebook, t YouTube, and Twitch. Yeah, all three of those platforms. Uh, I really greatly appreciate it when you guys do show up and we give away games literally like this one. In fact, we'll probably give away this game now that we've played it. So if you're interested in this game and you want to get, get a giveaway, next Wednesday, I'll, I'll give it away. I just decided that right now. <laughs> you can also go ahead and join us on Patreon, help to support me shipping these games out because I do this for you guys uh, during the streams and whatnot. Uh, it's a buck a month and we uh, will we usually try and give out, like do additional streams if we, we hit a certain number. Um, you can also go ahead and join our Discord. We do auctions and other kind of fun stuff there. And of course, Moonshell's coming along. We've now finally got all the shipping rates. And tomorrow, we're going to have the backer kit open up for you guys. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to deckscaping with you next time. Yeah, good outro that time. Deckscaping.